Hello friends, this video on Atoms part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 12 before going ahead with part 13. Now let us talk of spectra of multi-electron atoms. This was again another very major drawback of Bohr's a theory that it could explain only the spectrum of hydrogen which was a one electron atom but it could not explain the spectra of multi electron atoms unlike orbitals of hydrogen or hydrogen like species what are hydrogen like species for example helium plus or lithium plus plus these are hydrogen like species because however helium had two electrons but it gave up one electron and became one electron atom so this helium plus has, since it has one electron, so it is known as hydrogen-like species. Similarly, lithium two plus, it gave out both two of its electrons, so now it has one electron. So it is known as hydrogen-like species, whose energies depend only on the quantum number n. The energies of the orbitals in multi-electron atoms depend on quantum numbers n and l. So that is why things become complex. Because Bohr had taken into consideration only the principal quantum number. He took into consideration the quantization of energy levels, but he has taken only one parameter and that is the principal quantum number. Now, principal quantum number alone is not sufficient to describe the atomic spectra of multi-electron atoms. So, therefore came up the new era of quantum mechanics. So, what did quantum mechanics do? The classical mechanics based on Newton's laws of motion successfully describes the motion of macroscopic objects such as a falling stone, orbiting planets which have essentially particle like behavior. So as long as we are with classical mechanics, we can think of things which we see around us. Everything is macroscopic, Everything, every motion can be described by Newton's laws and every particle is particle. There is no concept of duality. However, it fails when applied to microscopic objects. So, this Newton's laws and all, they fail when we try to apply them on microscopic objects like electrons and protons. This is mainly because of the fact that classical mechanics ignores the concept of dual behavior of matter, especially for subatomic particles and the uncertainty principle because as I mentioned this wave particle duality becomes more prominent when we deal with the microscopic objects because for macroscopic objects as I told you the wavelength associated with them is very small so it can be neglected but for microscopic objects the wavelength is noticeable and we just cannot neglect it. So the classical mechanics did not consider the concept of dual behavior and therefore it could not succeed in microscopic world. The branch of science that takes into account the dual behavior of matter is called quantum mechanics. When quantum mechanics is applied to macroscopic objects for which wave-like properties are insignificant, the results are the same as those for classical mechanics. So that means quantum mechanics hold true for microscopic as well as macroscopic object. For macroscopic object, quantum mechanics and classical mechanics are the same. For microscopic objects, classical mechanics is a failure but quantum mechanics is a success. Quantum mechanics was developed independently in 1926 by Heisenberg and Schrodinger. As I mentioned, de Broglie's hypothesis, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Schrodinger's equation. These three were the milestones for the quantum mechanics. They were the ones who started the concept of dual nature and this dual nature gave rise to this vast era of quantum mechanics. So if we look at the quantum mechanical model of atom, so how does it look like? In that, we don't say that electrons always move in circular orbits around the nucleus. In that, there are not only orbits, but orbitals also which come into picture. You would have studied this in your chemistry lessons about this uh, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p and the various orbitals. So in this case, if you see this 1, 2, 3, th th these 
values represent the principal quantum numbers. That means it talks about which orbit the electron is. Now in one orbit again the electrons can have different orientations. So depending upon the different orientations the electrons are arranged in different orbitals. For example this 2s and 2p both of them are in the n is equal to 2 orbit but their orientations are different and therefore they are in two different orbitals s and p. Similarly, if two electrons are in the same orbit and the same orbital with the same orientation, their spins will be different, right? So, in the quantum model, not only one quantum number, but there were four quantum numbers which were introduced. N, L, M and S, that is principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. So these four quantum numbers together can describe the uh, electrons distribution in an atom, right? So this is the present quantum mechanical model of atom. So with this we will conclude this lesson on atom and I hope I was able to explain you the uh, atomic structure and what were the various atomic theories which were given by different scientists like um, uh, Rutherford, uh, Bohr and finally the quantum mechanical model of atom. So now based on whatever we have studied so far, we will try to solve few problems. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.